that we're all set. So welcome everybody that came. This is the second week that we're doing our professional communications to pick the Boston Private Industry Council. Um, and we're talking about how to send professional emails, communicate through phone and social media. So we're gonna get started. If you have a question, please add that into the chat box. We're gonna try and keep everyone muted just so there's no distractions. Um, and if you're able to change your first and last name on your Zoom account, that would be fantastic. But if you're not, just add your first and last name and the school you go to into the chat box. Okay, here we go, everyone. So I'm sorry, I'm Ms. Nicastro or Lindsay Nicastro. I work at the Margarita Muniz Academy and also the English High School. Hi everyone, um, I am Ms. Jackie Loro and I work at Tech Boston Academy and also the Henderson. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about what you should be doing, especially now that you're in your video classes throughout the weeks, how to stay professional in those classes. We're going to discuss email, how to communicate professionally through your phone, whether that's through a phone call or through text. And then we're going to look at social media really quickly as well. And why does this matter? Why in today's world, does it matter that you're professional? Well, I think you all know that since we're all at home and even before that, we're moving to an online virtual platform to where a lot of times the first time you meet someone, it's online or through an email or through a phone call. It's not in person. And you only get one chance to make a first impression. So you wanna make sure it's a good impression. When you show up ready and professional, it makes someone think that you're responsible enough to handle that job. So I know from my students, a lot of times they'll be like, miss, I don't know why I just want to be treated like an adult, not a child. Why are they treating me this way? And a lot of the times I say, are you acting like an adult? Are you being professional? Are you writing the right type of email? Are you responding in a good amount of time that makes sense? So to be treated like an adult, please act like an adult and you will get there. And then what is Boston most known for besides great sports teams? But it's known for being America's college town. You should all know that there are so many colleges at your front doorstep, but with colleges brings a lot of college students. So you need to stand out as a high schooler compared to those college students. So the more professional and responsible you look, the more likely you're gonna get a job or network with the right type of connection. And again, all this just shows that you are organized and trustworthy. So first things first, now that we're all using Zoom or Google Hangouts, especially for our live classes, you wanna make sure when you enter a Zoom or a Google Hangout that you have your first and last name um, or whatever you'd like to call yourself within uh, your Zoom. So a lot of times people will log in and it'll say like Lindsay's iPhone, but that could be anyone. So you wanna be able to change your Zoom name. And usually if you change it once, any other time you log back in, it will remember that. So what you can do is you can see this, you can either go to the little participants tab and then rename yourself there, or you can click the three dots next to your video and hit rename as well. So that's a really easy way to do it in Zoom. Again, if for some reason you're on your iPhone or something's not working properly or your computer, you can always add something into the chat box. If you really wanna be productive, you can put your first and last name plus like EHS for English High School, or you can add your BPS ID. Um, I know a few students that have similar first and last names. So if you're one of those students and you don't wanna get mixed up with another one, you can add your BPS ID. Oh, sorry guys. And then also your Google account. Many students don't realize that if you have a YouTube account and you've connected it to your Gmail, your Google Gmail, whenever you email someone, it'll actually show up as your YouTube name and not actually your Google name. So you want to make sure if you're going into account, you can hit manage your Google account and check the name that's in there because that's what's showing up when you email someone. So for most Boston Public Schools emails, it's all set, but if it's your personal email, you might want to double check. Okay, so what about Zoom and Hangout tips? So if you're on Zoom and you're not really sure what it means to be professional or look like, remember, don't be late or leave early because people do notice. So if somebody says, okay, class is from 1 to 1.30 p.m., try and show up at 12.59 or 12.58 and don't leave until class is truly over. Everybody's allowed to turn their video on, but it's not always requested. You don't have to do it. I love seeing everybody's faces, but don't feel pressure to turn it on unless a teacher or somebody asks for it. 
if you're in a noisy spot or you're worried about shuffling and somebody hearing that, feel free to mute yourself if you're not talking. Even if you're one-on-one -on -one with a teacher and you just don't happen to be talking at that moment, it's okay to keep yourself muted just so they don't hear shuffling around or maybe your own typing on your keyboard. If you're gonna use the chat box, don't write anything too personal. There is a way to privately chat someone on Zoom. You just go to the drop-down box and click their name. Um, so don't share anything like cell phone numbers or I don't know, passwords or other types of accounts that you wouldn't want a whole world seeing. And then make sure your photo is professional. So if I were to turn my camera off um, and I were to just show you my photo, right? It's a nice headshot and it's professional. You don't want it to be something that is a meme or is a funny photo of somebody else or is a very, very highly filtered Snapchat photo of you. You want it to somewhat be a nice professional headshot like you would put in your Google account or on a school yearbook photo or a LinkedIn account. It's okay to show, to tell someone up front, like, hey, I might have an interruption. Let's say that your cat is really anxious today and likes to jump in and out of the video. It's okay to say that at the beginning, especially if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one chat and just let them know I might get interrupted. Whenever someone's finished speaking, it's always nice in the chat box to say thank you as well. Um, just helps that person realize that they were being heard during this time. And then of course, if you decide to turn your camera on and use your video, make sure you're somewhat dressed appropriately. Um, think about like what your what's on your head, if it's a hat or something, and make sure that it's a well-lit room as well so that it doesn't just look like a, you know, a ghost in the background. Um, so feel free again to add in the chat if you have any questions about Zoom or Google Hangout tips. But we are gonna move on to email. All right, so um, I'm gonna go over like the uh, different aspects of email and then how to uh, write a professional email as well. Um, so, you know, I'm sure everyone knows what the two um, part of email is. That's, you know, that's where you put the email to who you're um, writing the email to, um, CC, um, which stands for carbon copy. You know, that's when um, you don't necessarily need a response from this person, um, but you do want them to see the email. Uh, and then BCC is which stands for blind carbon copy. Um, now these people, you can't, you can never tell who's blind carbon copied on an email. Um, so you always want to be careful and be making sure that you're professional in your emails because you don't know who is BCC'd I and mean, who's able to see the email. And normally those who are BCC'd, they don't need to respond to emails as well, but the person who sent an email just wants them to be aware. Um, just to use the BCC as an example, um, when I send mass emails to my students about upcoming job opportunities, or in this case, upcoming webinars, um, I put all their emails in BCC. So no one, no other student has access to another student's email, and all the students are um, receiving the same email that I'm sending, rather than sending it individually to every student. So a lot of people use BCC for that as well. Um, and then for the reply part, um, you want to be careful because a lot of students tend to do this. If there are people listed on the two and CC side, um, they'll click reply all when sometimes all you have to do is click reply. Um, reply only goes to the person who sent you the email. If you click on reply all, that email will go to everyone who's, um, who's in the two line, but also the CC line. Um, and sometimes you do need to um, click reply all and it, because everyone needs to see your response, but there are going to be times when you only need to respond to that one person who sent you the email. So just make sure you be careful um, in terms of who you're responding to. Lindsay, you're good on it. <clears throat> and then um, the subject line. Subject line is very important. Um, this is another mistake that I've seen some students make. Um, but subject line is basically just a few words that explains what you're emailing this person for. So if you are emailing a career specialist and you want to create a resume or you want to edit an existing resume, a good subject line would be resume appointment. Um, and instead, of, sometimes what students do is um, everything that they're trying to put in the body of the email, they'll put in the subject line. So we'll end up getting a subject line that has the whole entire email. Um, so you're going to be careful and make sure that you're putting the subject in the subject and the body in the body. Um, so just the subject line is important because it just gives the recipient uh, an idea of what you're emailing them about. Um, 
All right, so just to go over what, um, like what goes into an email and how to um, set that up. So you always wanna start off after you put the subject line, you always wanna start off in your body with an email greeting. Um, and you can do this a few ways. If you don't really know the person you're emailing, this is the first time you're emailing them, you haven't met them yet, or maybe you have, but you don't really have a close relationship with them, it's, um, you wanna be as formal as possible. So it's better if you say dear or hello. Um, so in this example on the side, um, it says dear Mr. Thomas or hello Mr. Thomas. Now, if you have a closer relationship, maybe you're emailing your boss and they've been your boss for years, you have a close relationship. Um, you're emailing your career specialist who's been your career specialist for years. Um, so you're a little closer. You can be a little less formal and say hi instead of hello or dear. You're still more than welcome to say hello, um, but you can go ahead and say hi, but never say hey or what's up. You always wanna keep it as formal as possible. Go to the next one. Um, and then you want to click enter after you put the greeting um, and in a new uh, paragraph, you want to start off by, you know, just being nice, um, you know, just common courtesy. Hope your day is going well. Hope your week is going well. Um, I've been fine during this time. I've been finding myself writing, you know, I hope you're staying safe and healthy during these times. So there's many different greetings you can do, but you always want to start off um, by just being nice and being courteous. Um, and then you can go ahead and say why you're emailing them. So going back to the resume example, you can say, I'm writing, um, I'm writing you an email because I would like to edit my resume or I would like to create a resume for a job opportunity that I have coming and they need a copy or whatever. Um, again, whatever you're emailing them for, you wanna say that after the email opening. Next. And then um, after you're done, seeing why you're emailing them and um, you finish with like um, the, the body of the email, you want to end it also being nice and being courteous. Um, you can say things like, I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to your reply. And then if you need to know a certain piece of information by a certain time, you can always ask um, for a deadline. So you can always say, you know, please let me know tomorrow by this time. Please let me know by next week at this time because I need to submit right, my resume by this day. So you, you're always more than welcome. You just wanna be nice and you wanna use manners by saying things like please and thank you. And then you wanna um, click enter and end your email with your email signature. Um, your signature is always gonna change throughout life as you get like new jobs or you go to um, you know, a new college. Um, but you know, as a student, this isn't a, like example of what you could put for your signature. So you say best, or you could say best regards. Um, you put your full name, your cell phone number, the name of the high school or the college that you go to if you're in college, and then the class that you're part of. Um, so that's just an example. You don't have to put everything there. If you're not comfortable putting your phone number there, that's fine. You don't have to put that. Um, you know, you can put any information, but this is kind of like a standard format for what to do in an email signature. Go next, Lindy. And this is just an example of um, an email. So in this email here, the subject is request to schedule an informational interview. So the person who is receiving this email, they already have an idea of what the email is. They, this person wants to request an interview with them. Um, and they start off with a greeting and they say, dear Mr. Gonzalez. So you, you already know that the person sending the email is not too close to it, Mr. Gonzalez, because they're being a little more formal. Um, they go ahead and you know introduce who they are and tell them why they're emailing them. Um, and then they end it with thank you so much, thank you so much for your time and consideration. Um, so they use manners, they're polite in their email. Um, and then they end it with, and this is what they put for their email signature. They put Sally Withers, the school they go to, and then their phone number. Um, so this is just an example again of what an email looks like. Um, and just for now, does anyone have, I know there's some answer, questions coming into the chat, but does anyone have any questions so far about um, emails? And feel free to just put them in the chat and we can either um, answer them in the chat or I can answer them out loud. All right, we'll go to the next slide. If a question comes through, then I'll answer it. All right, and then just some tips for writing an email. So again, avoid any negative tone, be polite, um, and you know, just be um, positive, use appropriate language. Remember you're not emailing your friends or texting your friends, so you don't wanna use abbreviations like LOL or BRB. 
um, or G2G or any of the abbreviations. You don't want to shorten your words, so you don't want to say, you know, THX for thanks or you are for your. Make sure you're spelling out all the words. Don't use any emojis. Don't use crazy fonts and don't use um, an excessive amount of question marks, exclamation points. Um, you can definitely use them, but one is fine. Um, make sure that you're using one exclamation point, one question mark, um, and you stick to the font that the email already has in place. Um, and then read your email out loud before sending it. Um, you know, type what you have to type, but just, just like when you're writing a paper in school, you always read it out loud or you always check over it before submitting the paper. Do the same thing for your email so that way um, you don't find yourself having to, you know, resend another email. Um, you know, apologizing for the spelling mistakes. And, and then again, that goes into the next bullet, which is make sure you're checking for any errors or spelling mistakes in your email. Um, and then make sure everything you want to say is included in your email. Um, Cause sometimes you might send it and then after you like, oh my God, I forgot to tell them this. And so you find yourself going back and emailing them again and saying, hey, I'm sorry, I you know, forgot to um, tell you this. So make sure everything you want to say is in there. So that way you only send in one email. Um, as I said before, be brief and polite. Um, even if you're sending an email with a lot of details, try to be as brief as possible. Um, don't, you know, so people aren't taking, you know, forever to read your emails. Um, and I'll make sure you're always saying please and thank you and just using your, um, using your manners. Um, and then, as I said before about the CC line, um, you know, those who are on the CC line don't necessarily need to respond to the email, but just be aware of who's on it so you know how to respond to the email. Um, and then anytime you receive an email, make sure you respond within 24 hours of receiving that email. That's why it's important to check your email every day. And I'm sure your career specialists tell you all the time to check your email every day. Um, but it's very important because you definitely want to respond within 24 hours. Um, if, you know, when, when you get to the professional world and you're out on vacation or you're out sick, um, you can create an uh, email message that, you know, tells people you're out of the office and that's perfectly fine. But if someone's not receiving that type of message, they're assuming that you're in the office. So you definitely want to respond within 24 hours. Thank you, Jackie. So now we're going to move on to how to text professionally and talk on the phone professionally. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to add it to the chat. If you're new and have popped in a little bit later once we started, um, please add your first and last name to your Zoom account or add your name into the chat as well as the school you go to. Okay, so for phone, to text or not to text, right? That's the question. Texting is really not seen as professional, even today. So you should try and avoid it as much as possible, but there are definitely some people who prefer text. Like maybe it's your Walgreens manager and they text you in the morning asking if you're gonna show up for your shift later. That's completely okay to text your manager back that way. But if your manager or supervisor or the person you're trying to connect with didn't text you first, you shouldn't assume that that's the way that they wanna be contacted because it's not usually professional. So if you have to use text, do text for very short time sensitive pieces of information. Like maybe you're really sick and you wanna be able to send an email, but you only have an hour until you're supposed to get to work. So sending a text might be quicker and uh, your manager might respond more quickly to that. That's okay. If you're texting somebody new or it's a professional contact, always include your first and last name so that you know who you are. My, I know that you guys probably know if you remember your school buildings, there's lots of flyers in there and there's phone numbers on the flyers, especially for your pick career specialist. So I'll, I'll get texts all the time that say like, hey miss, can you help me find a job? And I might not have that person's phone number. So I always have to ask back and be like, yes, but like, who is this? <laughs> so make sure you're trying to put your name in it somehow and maybe even the school you go to so they know who they're talking to. And then nowadays, everybody always has their phone in their hand or nearby. We're on TikTok till 3 a.m. Like you not responding to a text message usually means that you're ignoring the person. So try and respond within um, a couple hours if possible, if not a day at the most, because you wanna be able to let that person know. Even if you don't have an answer yet, you can always respond like, I saw this, I'm working on getting you an answer. And, and that's okay too. 
So again, don't text somebody unless it's okay with them. Do not send texts outside of the professional world schedule. So most people work between the hours of 6 a.m. and like 7 p.m. So try not to send a text after 9 p.m. because people might have their phones on only for emergencies at that time or you could be disturbing them with their family. Um, so think about trying to text during the actual daytime instead of at night because it'll take a while for you to get a response. And then of course, always reread. I can't tell you the amount of times autocorrect has messed up what I've been trying to say to somebody and I have to retext three or four times. So check that. And then the same thing as an email, try not to use too many abbreviations or emojis. If you have to, that's okay, but make sure that the person you're talking to is someone you have a decent relationship with um, and would be okay with you being informal. Okay, so if you have to make a phone call, let's say that you apply to a job at Stop and Shop and you haven't heard back for a while, so you want to reach back out to them and see what's going on. So if you're making a phone call and you call Stop and Shop, always, always introduce yourself first. You don't want the game of just going back and forth and saying, hello, hello, hello. So be sure to say, hi, this is Lindsay Castro. I'm calling from the English High School. I'm hoping to speak with your manager. So after you introduce yourself, state why you're calling them and what, you're try what information you're trying to get. Make sure you're speaking clearly. You know, don't take too many long pauses. Know kind of what you're gonna ask before you make the phone call. And if you're leaving a voicemail, speak slowly. Somebody has to remember the phone number you're giving or the information you're trying to ask. So try not to go too fast or shorten any type of word so they really understand you. And remember, if you're making a phone call or you're trying to reach out to Stop and Shop to talk to their manager, you're asking them for a request to either hire you or get your paycheck faster or get some type of information. So always have a positive tone because you're trying to get information from them and you don't want to be mean because that makes the person on the other end not want to talk to you. And then always listen. Don't watch TV or be texting on your phone or talking to somebody else in person while you're on a phone call. Make time. You don't want to disrespect another person's time. There have been a couple times where I've been on a phone with a student and I can hear them texting their friend as they're on the phone call with me because I can hear their little like nails tapping. Um, so try not do that because that just doesn't seem as respectful as it should. So our don't. So what happens if you do get a phone call that you've been waiting on for two or three days and you're on the T or you're on the bus and it's really noisy out and you're worried that if you don't pick up that person's never going to call again. Try not to pick up. Have your voicemail set up so they can leave you a message and you can call them back or pick up really quickly and say, hi, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm on the T. Can I give you a call back in five minutes once I get off? And usually they'll say, oh, that's totally fine. Like, call me at this number. Thank you. Try not to sound annoyed or have a negative tone in any way. Even if you're, you know, not getting the information that you need, try your best to stay positive. You never know what's happening on the other side of that phone. If someone calls you, don't answer with what's up, yo, or hey, just because you don't know who it is. Um, so be sure to sound professional, just like you are in emails. Um, and again, just try not to be distracted while you're doing it. Give your undivided attention because that person is somebody you want something from or you're trying to connect with for some reason. Okay, so again, set up your voicemail. If you're unsure how, usually if you click your little phone button, even if it's on an Android or um, uh, iPhone, you can usually go in and check your voicemail, which is down at the bottom. You can set up an automated greeting where it's like, you have called 617-438-5499, please leave a message. That's fine, but that's just like the very bare minimum. It's the basic level. So if you wanted to make it as professional as you can, it would be good to say your first and last name at least within the voicemail message. So, hello, this is Lindsay Nicastro. I'm not available at the moment. Please leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. That way, whoever is calling you and got that voicemail knows that they've actually reached you and that the message is going to get to you and this wasn't your home phone or your mom's phone or your cousin's phone. And then if you're not sure, you can always call your provider to check if you have a voicemail. And then just make sure that you're actually checking your voicemails within the day and then responding to anything that's left. 
Okay, so these are situations that have definitely come up that uh, students have come to me and asked me specifically about how to deal with. So if you're on the phone and you're talking to someone and that person has a very thick accent that you're not really understanding what they're saying or they're cutting in and out or they're talking so fast you're just not catching what they're saying, it's okay to interrupt them politely and say, sorry, could you repeat that again? It was a little bit too fast or things, there was some background noise and I couldn't hear you. That's completely fine. You never want to try and assume what somebody was saying. Um, just ask them to repeat it. If you pick up the phone on a noisy place, it's fine to say, hi, I'm on the T. Can I call you back in a couple of minutes? Now, this is a hard one. Let's say you call someone to get information or to you know, find out if your job application got accepted and they're like, sorry, can't help you right now or we're too busy, call back later. That sucks and that doesn't feel good and you get frustrated, but you don't know what they're dealing with on the other side and you need to try and stay polite because eventually you're gonna have to call back and you're gonna want them to respond to you next time. So it's okay, it's okay to just be like, all right, I understand. Thank you so much for taking the time. And you can always say, is there a better time for me to call? Or is there a specific time when the manager will be in so I can talk to them? And that way you're not wasting your time and you're not wasting their time. All right, we're gonna move on to social media. So if you have any more phone call questions, please feel free to add them in the chat. All right, um, so social media, um, you know, I know many of you are on social media today. Um, which is perfectly fine, but just keep in mind that a lot of companies and colleges um, do look up your social media. They will Google your name um, and whatever, you know, social media you have, whether it's Instagram or Facebook, Snapchat, um, TikTok, whatever it is, th these type of things can come up. Um, so just make sure that you, you keep your social media posts and like, photos um, appropriate and clean at all times. Um, and it's important that you Google yourself because I've done it before. And so if you Google yourself, you'll see, you can see what comes up. So if you've ever posted something bad in the past and it happened to go viral or something, um, that can come up and these companies or colleges will be able to see it. So just make sure that you're deleting things that you wouldn't want these companies to see. Um, and you're just going forward, you're not posting anything that you wouldn't want them to see. Um, and then keep in mind, too, when it comes to suggested friends, a lot of suggested friends come from people around you. Um, so, you know, one of your career specialists, one of us can be a suggested friend or a teacher that you have. Um, and you never know if, like, you know, the adults that you have on your friends list are friends with people who are potentially hiring you for an internship or um, for a job in the future or a college, admiss a college admissions officer. You might come up as a suggested friend and they might find you that way as well. Um, so just make sure you, you're appropriate at all times on social media and Google yourself if you ever wonder like, is there anything out there about me that I wouldn't want people to see? Um, it, it's really important to do, I've done it before, so um, definitely do it when you get the chance. Um, and then this is just an example um, of someone who spoke negatively about their job on Twitter um, and the CEO, was able to see the tweet. So she said um, to someone else, she said, you know, my job sucks. And she said she works at Baloco on Newberry Street. And they responded and said, sorry, not anymore. So that was a quick way that, <laughs> to lose your job. Um, and you definitely don't want that to happen to you. So that's another thing is make sure you're not speaking bad about your job or your boss. Like, you know, you in life, you might encounter a job. If you haven't already, you might encounter a job that, you know, you're not happy at. Or you might have a manager you don't like working with. Um, and that's okay, but just don't go on social media and talk about it because you never know if it gets back to them or not. Because these employers are on um, social media, so you definitely want to be careful with that. And then lastly, if you're really into using social media and you want to be professional on it, you should think about creating a LinkedIn account. A LinkedIn is basically like Facebook, but for resumes and job opportunities. So you can go on there, you can connect with past managers and supervisors. Let's say you worked at State Street last summer and you're thinking, okay, I might not want to work there next summer, but once I graduate college, I want to go back to State Street and possibly work there. Connect with your boss now so that 
they remember who you are and they stay connected and watch your journey through college and your other um, professional endeavors. So you can post your resume on there. You can post different class assignments and videos. And then you can go on and look for your teachers and your coworkers and you can use it for networking. They also have this great thing. So if you're heading to college, either in the fall or in the future, you can look up the college and then you can see all the students at that college and you can connect with some of them. Um, or you can connect with the deans and the professors and the teachers. Or you can see, oh, this person went to Boston University and graduated in 2015. Now they work at Vertex Pharmacy that's so cool. I should connect with this person because I go to Boston University. Um, so just a good way to get your foot in the door um, to more opportunities. And it's really easy to make. If you're going to make it, make sure that you um, have made it so that it's very professional. You're using your uh, good headshot and you're putting everything appropriate. So you can see this is kind of what it looks like when you're on your LinkedIn page. You can join different groups. So we actually have a PIC alumni network where you can go in and we post about current job opportunities, full-time positions, part-time positions, any type of field trips or other things like that sometimes come up on here. Um, and then if you want to look at your own profile, and it'll be mine right now, you can see this is what you'll look like to the world. Um, it'll say where you work, what you do, the things that you post, and then all your job experiences. And I have my job experience listed until I was in high school. Um, so lots of different opportunities here for you to add things. And then people can even go down and write really nice things about you too. So it's kind of like somebody's giving you a recommendation plus a reference um, all in one website. And a lot of students end up adding this URL, the website, onto their resume so that it's easy for employers to check out. So this is kind of wrapping up the end of it. We want to say thank you um, for uh, coming and being here. We're going to post this up on our YouTube and send it out so you can always check back. And we're going to send out this survey as well. If you, I'm not sure if you guys are able to click that link there, but we can also add it into the chat box. Um, please feel free if you're interested in like, I really want to know more about budgeting or opening a bank account. We want to be able to do that for you and to have those options, but we just need to know that you're interested. So that's what the survey is about. And then the last part is, you know, everybody's going through somewhat of a tough time. Some of us are at home. Some of our families are struggling different than others. So if you do need any type of help um, and are looking for some extra resources, uh, please feel free to reach out to not only your school and your career specialist, but there's also a website that has a lot of different op options online about employment, about how to get some money during this time, and how to like find sites for food. We're going to stick around after this um, if you do want to hang out and I'll let you guys unmute yourselves or continue to be in the chat, but that's all we got for you now. So thank you for coming. Thank you guys.